Are you gaming, coding, creating some 3D models, or video editing? All of these tasks utilize the computer hardware different. But recently, we built a new 4K video editing PC for the office. And in this video, we want to talk about how to choose the right components to get the best video editing performance for your budget. What's up guys, it's Jordi here for Cinecom.net. If you are considering in buying a new 4K video editing PC, then it's a great time to do that. Nvidia recently put the GTX 1080 graphics card on the market, and a new Titan X should also be on the way. And Intel is rocking with their new 6th generation processors. So that means you can buy new hardware, which lay on top of today's technology, or you can get previous generation hardware for a lot less of the price. A wonderful time to be alive. But that still doesn't help us choose the right parts. So let's get into that. When building a computer, I would always advise to work together with a specialist from a local store or something. What I did was make a list of hardware I wanted and ask an IT guy if all the components would fit together and if they were utilizing the hardware good. I had two remarks, one was that the memory that I choose, I had 2100 and something megahertz, while the processor that I choose could handle up to 2400 megahertz. And the second remark, that was my case. My hardware didn't seem to fit in it. But also things like water cooling and power supply, I don't really care about those things, it just has to work and cool my components well. So I just let the IT guy decide on that. But there are components that we must choose ourselves. Most IT guys can't help you with that, as the computer for video editing is still pretty niche. Therefore, we need to define the CPU, graphics card, memory and storage. Let's start off with the most important component, which is the CPU. It's often a misconception that the graphics card does all the work, but in reality, video editing and rendering is all about processing power. Software is, however, changing and try to utilize the graphics card more and more, but as of today, it's still very minimum. But we'll come to that later. Modern programs like the Adobe apps DaVinci, Final Cut are all designed to use multi-cores. That means a 3 GHz 8 core will give you much better performance than a 4 GHz quad core. The biggest part of your budget should go to this component and try to get as much cores as you can. Two CPUs is also great, as that can allow you to go up to 16 or even 20 cores, which will give you extraordinary performance. But I do have to add a disclaimer to double check your software, whether they support so many cores. Always remember that the weakest link is the software. And then let's talk about the graphics card. There are two kinds of cards. You have the typical cards like the GTX series from Nvidia, let's say anything below $1000. And then you have the Quadro graphics cards, which are specifically designed for video editing. But be prepared to spend multiple thousands of dollars for just one of those. Those Quadro cards gives you a significant performance increase. But of course, all the hardware have to be aligned. So if you have at least $5,000 budget for only the PC without peripherals, you can start looking at those Quadro series. For all the rest, we have to do it with a GTX card, which unfortunately is barely used by, let's say, Premiere Pro. In the early days, Premiere Pro didn't even use the graphics card at all. You could literally use the onboard VGA connector without performance loss. But luckily, Adobe has been working hard to utilize the GPU more and more, but it's still a fraction. They have something now called the Mercury Playback Engine, which uses the so-called CUDA cores on your graphics card to playback video in your timeline and render it out in the media encoder. But it's still a combination with the processor, so it's good to have a graphics card with lots of CUDA cores. Also, the GPU memory helps with the rendering, but a card with 4 or 8 gigabytes won't give you much noticeable difference unless you're really into 3D modeling, animations and such. Working with multiple GPUs in SLI has a negative effect, as Premiere Pro doesn't fully support that yet. It'll actually run very unstable and possibly decrease in performance. You've heard me talking a lot about the NVIDIA graphics cards, and that's because NVIDIA and Adobe work close together. I have no experience with the AMD cards, but just to be safe, I would recommend an NVIDIA card for video editing. Next comes the memory, or the RAM. The price of this component keeps falling, so it's no excuse anymore to be cheap on this. 
If video renders 2D RAM memory, if it overflows, it will swap with a file on your much slower hard drive. If you want a serious editing PC, a true minimum of 16 gigs is recommended. And if you're like me, having 10 programs open at the same time, I would start looking at 32 gigs minimum. And then finally, the hard drive. Also here we see a misconception that many people will tell you to get some really fast storage, but in reality some good old fashioned hard drives will be enough for rendering and playback. You have to know that your system can be faster than its weakest link, in which this case is the processor. It has to make all the rendering calculations and then write the video to the hard drive, but it will never be as fast to write at speeds like 500 gigabytes per second. However, it could never harm to have a normal SSD if your budget allows that. SSDs are more reliable and of course future proof. However, where a faster storage does benefit a lot is for the operating system and your programs. SSDs with a PCI Express connection are capable of speeds up to 2 gigabytes per second and are decreasing in price significance. Not only your PC will boot faster, but in general everything you do from opening programs, switching between them, etc. goes blazing fast with one of these. A good setup would be a super fast storage for your operating system and programs and a slower hard drive or SATA SSD with lots of capacity to put your video files on. So with all of this information in mind, let's have a look at our new 4K video editing machine. We had a budget of around 3000 euros and one third of that went to the processor. It contains the Intel 6900K, a top of the line processor which rocks 8 cores at 3.2 GHz. With the Corsair water cooling I was able to do a stable overclocking of 4.3 GHz. For the video card we went for the new GTX 1080. I've chosen the cheapest available as those more expensive overclocked cards won't give me any benefits. The card also won't get so hot as with gaming so the standard cooling was fine. This graphics card has lots of CUDA cores and plenty of video memory to be future proof. If you are on a budget but do like to enjoy the new architecture, then a GTX 1070 or 60 will give you great results as well. Keep in mind that the processor is more important than this, that's why I didn't went for the Titan. Furthermore, it has 64 gigs of memory at a speed of 2400 gigahertz. I asked the supplier to add 4 modules of 16 gigs, so I'll be able to expand to 128 gigs in the future, but he has used all the slots with 8 modules of 8 gigs. Luckily, I'll be able to trade it in back when he has the new models. And then for the storage, it has a PCI Express SSD of 500 gigs from Samsung which has 2 gigs read speeds and 1.2 gigs write speeds. I have Windows 10 installed on it together with all my programs. For my video files I used my Samsung Evo 1TB SSD from my old PC. Whenever I am done with a project I transfer everything to the server. Now what I've done is created a Premiere Pro and After Effects project with some generated effects. You guys can also download these projects if you'd like to compare your results to this setup. You can find the link up there or also in the description below. To start, we rendered the Premiere Pro sequence inside Adobe Media Encoder, which gave a result of 3 minutes 41. Oddly enough, when rendering directly from Premiere, we got 4 minutes 23. I was expecting similar or better results. My old PC, on the other hand, did got faster rendering when it was exported directly from Premiere Pro. I'm not sure where the issue is at, but I believe it's a good example of how software has a great impact on the performance. Perhaps Premiere Pro isn't fully updated yet to the new processor or graphics card. Then with the After Effects project we got 11 minutes and 6 seconds when rendering through Media Encoder and a very nice result of 8 minutes 15 when rendering directly from After Effects. Here you see that Adobe's Dynamic Link is a great feature but it's not at its best performance yet. You can find the whole spec list of my old PC and my new PC together with a nice table of rendering times with the settings that were used in the download as well. If you like, you can share your rendering results in the comments below or just ask me any questions if you are building your own PC. Also, if you'd like to see me do something with this beast machine, then let me know in the comments. And before you ask, I will not do a drop test. Thanks a lot for watching and stay creative.